Hi, and welcome to this Tech Insights video. My name is Mary, and I'm an engineer here at IFM Effector. In today's video, we are going to show you our IFM EIP library in the Codasys software when using our CR display and Ethernet IP IOLink masters. So let's get started. So before we go into the Codasys software, let's download the IFM EIP library. To do this, let's head to the IFM website, and on the home page, you can go to the Industry 4.0 tab at the top, and you will select Industrial Controls. Here on this site, if we go down to Setup and Support, and select Download Codasys Libraries, here's where you will find the most up-to-date libraries for the Codasys environment. And here on the first bullet, you will see the library for Ethernet IP. And if you click it, you can download it. Now to install the IFM EIP library in the Codasys programming software, you will select the Library Manager on the left-hand side. Within the Library Manager, you will select Library Repository, and then you will select Install. Now you will navigate to the library that you just downloaded from the IFM website, and you will select it and click Open. For the purposes of this video, we have already installed this library, so we will skip this step now. While still in the Library Manager, you will click Add Library, and you will expand Applications, and you will select the IFM EIP Library, and select OK. And now if you scroll down to the library that you just added, here you can see it has the cyclic, acyclic, and IOLINK function blocks. And now to create a new program, on the left-hand side you will right-click on Application. Here you will select Add Object, and you will select POU. Here you will give it a meaningful name, for example, IO Mapping, and then you will select the implementation language. In this example, we are using FBD for function block diagram, and then you will select Add. And before we continue, as shown in our previous video, if you go into your master and into the Ethernet IP IO mapping, make sure you have a variable name for the start of your input array. As you can see here, we have input master one. And if you scroll down, we have output master one at the start of our output array, which is defined as the percent QW0, and the input is percent IW0. Now, if we go back into our program, on the right-hand side, we have our toolbox, and under the general menu, we will select the box and drag it and drop it into the first rung of our program. Here, if we select the three question marks within the box, and then the three dots to the right, we will go into the IFM EIP library and select the cyclic function block and press OK. If you press enter, you can then give this function block a meaningful name, such as cyclic master one, and press enter, and then you will press OK. So now let's configure this function block. First, let's set the X execute boolean to true, and you can do this by double clicking on the question marks and typing true and pressing enter. Next, we have to set the input and output variables to the variable names that I just showed you for the starting points of the input and output array. We will do this using the ADR syntax. So you will type ADR, open parenthesis, the name of your starting point of your input array, which was input master one, and then end parenthesis and press enter and you'll do the same for the output array. The next variable we need to configure is the AL ports four or eight, and this is referencing the number of ports your IOLINK master has. The default setting is eight, and we are going to keep it for this setting. If you click on the question marks and type in AL ports, and then a period, you will see the different options there and we're going to keep it set for eight ports, so we will select AL underscore eight port and press enter. The next variable is PD size, which is the process data size of your IOLINK master. Here, if you type in AL PD size and then period, you will see the different options available here. The factory default is PDS underscore 32, and we are going to keep it for this setting. 
And now the last step for this function block is if you right click on the function block, you can select remove unused function block call parameters and it will hide any variables that are not being used. Now to add an IO link sensor function block. To do this, we'll create a new rung and drag in another empty box from the general toolbox on the right hand side. And then if we go to the three question marks on the inside and the three dots, we will navigate to the sensor function block folder inside of the IFM EIP library. In this example, we are using an SM6621 flow sensor. So if we scroll down to the S's, we will find the function block titled SMXX2X. We will select that and press OK. If we press Enter, and then we give it a meaningful name. And press OK. And now we point the IOLink master variable to the cyclic function block we just created. So this will go to cyclic master one. And then the port is pointing to the port number that the SM is connected to. In our example, it is connected to port one. So I'll press one. And then you need to enter the flow gradient for the SM6621. You can find the flow gradient in the IODD PDF of our IOLINK sensors. So for example, if we navigate to our website, here on the SM6621 data sheet, if you go to the downloads tab, and scroll down under IODD downloads and select the PDF. Here in the IODD PDF, we will find the gradient for flow. So if I copy this, I can then enter it into the flow gradient variable for the function block. And now I will right click and remove the unused function block call parameters. And now we can add the program to the PLC task configuration. We can do this by dragging the IO mapping PRG that we've created into the task configuration on the left hand side. Now let's build the program to check for any errors. We'll do this by clicking on build and selecting generate code. And now if we go down here, we can check our messages for any errors. And if we open it up, we will see there are no errors. So now we can go and log into our program and let it run. We'll do this by clicking log in. And then you can press the play button to run it. Here we can expand the SM6621 values. And we currently do not have any flow running through the flow sensor, but you can see the temperature value changing here. So there you have it. That concludes this Tech Insights video on using the IFM EIP library in your Codasys programming software. As always, check out our Learn More section on our website for helpful information on any of our products. Feel free to contact us at info.us at ifm.com or call into 1-800-441-8246 to speak with somebody who can assist you. Thank you for your time and have a great day.